My name is Marshall Armstrong. Are you ready to get going? Yes. Here's what we're going to talk about. Kind of a little road map. We'll talk about email, IM, phone calls, those kind of things. And um, we're going we're to make this rock. All right. Who am I? You ever look at yourself in the mirror in the morning and go, who, who am I? Okay, I'm the only one. <laughs> Got it. Okay. So I'm Marshall Armstrong. I work in DP2IA. I, I'm a recruit fill staffer, so you'll see these slides kind of have that lens tint to them. So if you work in benefits or, I don't know, casualty affairs, something like that, kind of tweak this to fit what you might be doing, okay? So that, that's the goal, is to make this work for everybody and not just for a recruit fill staffer. Um, I think that's gonna be annoying. All right, so just don't hold it against me. I'm a staffer. It's okay, we'll get through it. I'll still be your friend, I promise. All right, why are we here? To learn? Man, you. Yes. There we go. <laughs> it's it's going to be a long 45 minutes, y'all. Let's go. Let's, eat. Let's get going. Okay. Hopefully, we're here to get some ideas on how to be more productive. Because ultimately, that's what is kind of expected of us. Especially coming from DP2I, where we have what I call production numbers that I'm supposed to reach every day. And so, for example, a production number might be if I do a management advisory, that would count one. And I have to do four a day. So it depends on if I'm doing a referral certificate or an announcement or a job offer, whatever the case might be, I have to do four a day. So that's why I kind of like <coughs> this, because I want to know how I can get more than four a day. I want to exceed that standard. So hopefully by going through here, you can kind of see how I at least reach my four production numbers that I need to do a day, okay? Um, some expectations that we have. I would expect you all to converse with me. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh my goodness, yes. this is amazing. We can talk to each other, learn from each other. I don't know it all. Give me some ideas. I would love to be more productive. Help me out, okay? Um, another expectation might be if you have a question, ask. If I, go, if I talk about something and you're not quite sure, you don't understand, let me know. More than happy to expand on it and, and give you some more insight on why I might do something a certain way. Okay? Third expectation. I am not going to read the slides to you. I think they're going to be there. I don't need to read them. Fair enough? So an expectation would be that you would read the slides while I'm talking. Okay. Good, we got that underway. So when we're doing production and when we're doing our tasks here at APC, something we might have to do is multitask. Indeed? So I heard, said once that I am a great multitasker. I can be unproductive, waste time, and not do my job all at one time. That's multitasking. Okay, maybe that's not what we're talking about for APC. That was a joke. <laughs> All right, so sometimes multitasking is needed, and we'll talk about that as we go through. So let's talk about how to plan our production. Here's what we're going to talk about. Email, phone calls, IM, and we'll get to office visitors and what to do with them. There you go, laugh. You give them the wrong building number. That's what you do. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. So what do you all feel is the most common interruption that pulls you <coughs> off tasks and pre prevents you from doing production? What is the most common? Office visitor. Socializing. Yeah. Socializing? Oh. Yeah. So your office visitor would be a coworker. <laughs> yeah, previous coworkers. Okay. Socializing, visitors. Are we all pretty much think the same? If we could just keep people away from my desk, I could get my job done. Phone calls. Phone calls? Okay, good. We're going to talk about all that, and then I'll kind of share with what I do, and then we can talk, and you can share with me what you do, and we'll be able to tell our office visitors to go away without being rude. Or maybe we will be, I don't know. 
So before we get going on this, let's talk about how to be prepared. See, I have learned that being an AFPC, to be more productive and to be more effective, I need to be prepared. So what I do at the end of each day is I spend about 10 minutes preparing for the next day. Because let's face it, when I leave AFPC, I love y'all, but I forget you. When I go home, I go home. The last thing I'm thinking about is, what do I gotta do tomorrow? Uh-uh. When I jump in the car and I turn on Striper, I'm out. <laughs> if you're probably 25 and younger, you don't know who Striper is. And if you don't like 80s hair metal, you really don't know who Striper is. But anyway, so the point is, I get in my car and I've forgotten what I've done. So I need to be prepared so when I walk in the next day, I don't spend 30 minutes trying to figure out, what do I got to do today? So I spend 10 minutes, maybe even only five, it just depends, figuring out what I'm going to do tomorrow or on Monday if it's Friday. Okay? So what I have is I have a stacking file, I don't know what you call it, a file holder. We'll call it a file holder. And um, so at the very top is what I have to do tomorrow. So anything I have going that I don't get done, it goes in the top shelf. So when I walk in tomorrow, I pull my top, boom, I'm ready to go. I spent no time. I'm, I'm, I'm rolling my production right away. That's how I stay organized. Now that might not work for everybody. Some people don't like those little file organizers on their desk. They want it in a desk drawer. Okay, make it work for you. But be prepared the next day to come in and immediately start working. So I figured it up, because I, I like numbers. Let's pretend, hypothetically, we spend five minutes the night before saving time for the next day. So let's say we only save 10 minutes, that initial 10 minutes the next day getting ready. So we save ourselves 10 minutes a day. Per person, that's how many minutes a week? 50? 10 times five is 50, okay. So we save 50 minutes a week times 26 weeks a year, we save 21 and a half hours per person just by being prepared. Let's say we only have 800 people at AFPC. We have more than that, right? But let's say we only have 800. If we save 21 and a half hours a year times 800, 17,200 hours we've saved by being ready for the next day. What could we do with that time? Maybe get some training. It's nine FTEs. Just I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it, I mean that's a lot of time. Person was already doing the math. And <laughs> overtime. The decrease. Then. Okay. I mean, there we go. All that time that we save just by being prepared. Okay, so that's getting prepared. Any questions? Because we're rolling through this really fast. We're going to be done before you're done eating. <laughs> no questions. We're good so far. Sorry. Okay. Let's get into email, how to be prepared. So before I do that, I want to talk about um, how I set up my desktop, because I think this is being part prepared, getting ready to jump into email and the rest of it. So how I set my desktop up is I have the very best picture on it. <laughs> that is the best way to be prepared. Now again, you just make it work for you, whatever you like. Maybe you're a Yoda fan. I forgive you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tough crowd. So what I do is I, I start up here on the left side of my computer screen. So I have two screens, right? You can kind of see where it's divided. The left side, I start with the very first thing in a recruit fill per, uh, request for personnel action process. So I start on the left side. My first thing is to do an announcement and a management advisory. So that's on the left side. The next part is to do a referral certificate, so that's next. Then the next step in the process is to do a job offer, that's next. And then on the very far right side, I have my reference docs. And I set myself up like that, so if I am in my certificate process, that's where I'm at, I know exactly where on my desktop my folders and my docs are. I'm not searching, I'm not looking here and there, I'm not trying to find it in my folder labeled Star Wars. I know exactly where it's at. So I, that, that's how I stay prepared to get into my email and my other stuff on my desktop. <clears throat> Any better ideas? I love ideas. This is back in um, when, I, when I was active duty, um, we had what we called EO2000. It was continuous improvement process. Does anybody remember this? Or am I just that old? Oh, CPI. 
Okay, so, and what we did was we continually tried to improve all of our processes. And that's what I'm trying to do. I want to continually improve this. So if y'all have a better idea, man, let me know. Because if I can get up to six production numbers a day, all the better for all of us. I got a question for you. When, they, yes, sir. when uh, updates get pushed, do you have problems with your desktop rearranging itself? It hasn't. Really? No, sir. It ha I have not had any issues like that. Like you, you, need, you need dark, dark, <laughs> dark Vader prevents that from happening, sir. There you go. The force is strong with you. Yes. I don't know why, but I've never yeah. had. I actually, what? I put folders for that reason because I've tried that and I get an update and boom, it's all over the place. I'm like, really? So I would just create folders to put key right. documents in. It just like, and that might be a good idea so. because if your desktop rearranges every, how, how often do they push those? Like twice a week sometimes? Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you're having issues like that, yeah, adjust because um, you don't want to have to spend <laughs> that 30 minutes rearranging your icons. Yeah, that's a good thought. Anybody else? Okay. All right, so email. Here's what I do with my email. We're going to take a look at three things. We're going to look at how I organize my email in my inbox, and then we'll look at signatures, what I do with my signatures, and try to make it. I'm sorry, am I in there? That's okay. Dun, dun, dun. So, and then we're going to talk about subject line and how, what my subject line does for me by how I organize it. Okay? All right. Let's just start. No good jokes. Here's how my email inbox looks. So I have my email inbox organized by base because when a request for personal action comes in, we call it an RPA. Everybody familiar with RPA? Can I just say RPA? Okay. So y'all good with RPA? Okay. So what happens is because they come in by base, I organize all my email by base. So for example, when I do a management advisory, I send that out to the base and to the selecting official and say, hey, this is what your, R your RPA says. Um, you want to recruit for 30% and it's a term and whatever the case might be. Once it's sent and they reply and go, got it, I've moved that email into whatever base that came from. Here's why I do that. If they come back and say, hey, Marshall, you never told me that this was a 30% I wanted to recruit for whatever the case might be. All I do is I pull up that base, I search for that RPA, and I'll show you this on my subject line when we get there. And it takes me no time to find and to tell that selecting official and or CPS, I told you, here's the email. Instead of searching through my whole inbox of 40,000, because with this new setup we have, yeah. our inbox can be huge. So instead of trying to search through a million different emails, I know exactly which base it came from, search, boom, done. And, it's, and it, just, it saves me just a couple minutes at a time, but really, how many times a day times that by a couple minutes? <coughs> That can be some good production numbers. So that's how I set mine up. Any questions so far? Any ideas, ways I can do better? OK, you had your chance. <laughs> so let's look at how I do my <clears throat> signatures. So right now, I have about 20 different signatures. Y'all know what an email signature is, right? You go up here and you click on signature, and it drops down. And if you click on this little signature thing right here, you can create as many signatures as you want. And so what I do is any email that I send repeatedly, I save as a signature, the whole email. Not just Marshall Armstrong, A, B, C, D, B, 2, no. I, the whole text is a signature, okay? So let's say I'm sending an email for a cert reminder to say, hey, as selecting official, your cert is coming up, it's due next week, make your choice and send it back to me. We'll just pretend that's the email. I send that a lot because our selecting officials are really busy and they get tied up and sometimes that reminder helps them, oh yeah, I need to do my cert and get it back, okay? So here's what it looks like. I hit cert reminder, one button, so I've clicked signature, then I hit cert reminder, and my email's populated. Okay, How, so you, t okay, go ahead, sorry. I'll let you finish. No, 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 go ahead. Do I need to go back? So you take the whole entire text and save it in the signature Correct. box. I didn't realize it was... Yeah, so if I click on here, and I, I can show you, I can show all this at the end. 
I mean, I'll, I'll run through one and I just show you what it. I do. Well, that's awesome because I've tried to do the draft yeah. thing where you save it as a draft. And then oh, just, my. And then you yeah. lose it and it gets sent it, without yeah. wanting it to be sent. Exactly. And, yeah. It's a, yeah. So I just save them as a signature. And I can show you after we're done. I'll pull up an email. So you tell your friends this is what happens when they miss brown bags. They don't get to hear these great tips. Or spread word the word. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Let me know if you want. I'll, I'll demo for if, if we, I don't know if we can pull up email on there when we're done. Yeah. We'll try. If, if not, we'll, I'll, I'll, yes, ma'am. So in the same space, uh, someone showed me that uh, Outlook has something called quick parts. You can save bits that, so with a signature, if you change the signature, change the signature, or add a signature, and it kind of wipes everything else off. But quick parts, you can jam a whole bunch of those into one thing. You got a bunch of building blocks. I see the PII notice. Right. In a quick part. And then you add that quick part into that email and it automatically populates. Mm -hmm. Right? You have to go into Outlook and find uh, how to add the extra bits and then you can change the but uh, we could share that actually. I'm pretty sure that we did a little thing for our office. So we could send it to Crystal and everybody can do that. Yeah, you yeah. add it to a how to to the slides. Yeah. And if you want, I can do a, a PowerPoint like this of just how to do a signature. Like, it's, it's really easy. No, I know how to do it. I just never try putting more words in there. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's what, what I do. I put the know. whole email in there. Yeah. After he showed me this, I was like, and I'm doing one for leave. I'm like, this is great. <laughs> I'm like, well, how often do you do that? Right. Probably all the time. And I, you can see I have mine for management advisory, announcements, certs, job offers, everything. Everything I do, I have a template for. So if you look right here, all I have to do is change when it's due and a certificate number. I change those two things, takes me a minute, a minute or less, and I hit send. So it takes about two minutes to send this email. Instead of retrying to type or hit find one, hit forward, change everything, send. That's what I do. The question. Go. So I see a little bit um, on the slides. You can change the color so it kind of reminds you to change right. certain things. Because I didn't delve that much whenever I started making some templates. I do. But, okay. You can make it like some people have them red. So you know the red text has to be changed before you send it. Yeah. Otherwise, they might get uh, your cert is due in forty-five, forty-five. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Any questions on this before we press on? Be like a personnel hack right there. That is awesome. Any other? That's a great idea. I love to add the bits piece because then you can just stack and stack, and man, that's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's a good thought. Okay, let's look at my email subject line. So why do we, why do I make my email subject line the same every time? Well, I think because we're folky, right? They came back, well, at least our team was. Here, you have a standardized subject line. But I kind of had it this way before because it just makes it easier to search, mm -hmm. right? So I have, my first part is what the email is about kind of the meat of what this email is for. Announcement notification. So that's gonna be my first part. Then next is gonna be the RPA number because that's generally what I search for next. Okay, <coughs> then you can see as it goes on, series, whatever it is, the base, because that way I don't have to open my whole email to try to figure out which folder to move this into. I look at my subject line, boom, it goes right into the Lackland folder. Saves me time. And then I use, I put VIN on mine, our vacancy identification number. I use that on mine just because VIN's easier to search in USA Staffing for me. So that's how I run my subject lines. Any better thoughts? I'm gonna go back to expectations, where part of the expectations was that you all talked to me. <laughs> I, uh, I usually take my subject lines and what's worked for me is I, I treat it like each or less all the time. And using that type of format usually gets me some pretty good. Right, responses. makes it easy to search for. Plus, it's easier to search. Yeah. yeah. 
So regardless yeah. of what, what it is I'm asking for. Yes, sir. Depending on what kind of email you're sending out, if we send out anything that has a task or a suspense on it, I always put suspense and capital letters near the very front of the line and that date on there. Mm -hmm. That way, it's uh, near the end of the line after the description. A lot of people will see it with their preview pane. They may right. Notice it all, but it make sure it catches their attention. So if there's action required or a suspense or something. Put the action in there too. Yeah. yeah. Bold action, bold, in all caps. Yeah. yeah. I sometimes just highlighted, <laughs> underlined, bold. <laughs> the person you might be emailing all of a sudden starts changing the subject to a completely different thing. So sometimes I'll change the subject when I reply. So oh, good one. Yeah. I've done that. Yeah, that's a good thought too. Yeah, because or they'll send me an email and say, hey, what's going on with this RPA? <laughs> what, what, what what RPA? So then I change the subject line replying back, RPA, right. then whatever. Yeah, that's a good one, because sometimes. If the email keeps going and going, it's easier to just simply pick up the phone. Instead correct. Of on your time. That is correct. <laughs> Speaking of phone, okay, are we all good here? Did anybody learn anything? Yeah. yeah. Marshall, I just add on that, because the way you have it, like you said, is a great example for staffing. And, but for those of us that aren't in staffing, I think the key takeaways are where would you look if you were using this email as a matter of record or documentation? Right. Or sort? How would you know where to find it in your PSD? And so I had an example earlier this week where uh, I called one of my employees and I said, hey, I'm still waiting for such and such. And he said, I sent it to you this morning. I thought, really? Because I didn't see it. I went back and I had an email and the subject line was forms. Which, it, it, technically it was a form, but that's not what I was looking for. I wanted to know what kind of form, who was the form about, that kind of right. information, because that's how I'm going to file it. I'm not going to file it with forms. It was one form about one person. Mm -hmm. So I think the more we can uh, provide clarity about the subject of the email and the subject line, yes. the more helpful. And I, like if you're working in the PCS unit or something, maybe you want to put the individual name on there, the last name or something, so that, yeah, because if you just say PCS and they reply back PCS, you're going to go, oh my goodness, which PCS are we talking about? Or maybe you work strictly, anybody work strictly out of R&T, my first? I mean, maybe putting the R&T ticket number up there works best. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, those are great ideas. Okay, phone calls. Do y'all prefer phone calls over email? Phone call. Depends. Yeah, it depends. It depends. It's like what was brought up earlier. If it's going to be a lengthy cop, I don't want 12 emails that I can cover in a technical <coughs> conversation. Right. Okay. It also matters whether or not the recipient prefers an email versus email. So there are introverted people like myself. I know you don't believe that, but I'm very introverted. I'm going to go home and take a nap for like five hours after this. <laughs> but there are introverted people that I prefer email and I am because then I don't got to talk. And my email are very short and very blunt. I, I apologize if I ever have to email any of you, but I'm, normally you'll get a good morning and then what's going on? Be because I, I, I just don't say a lot like that. So the phone wears me out. I don't prefer the phone, but it is necessary sometimes. You're absolutely right. <clears throat> I don't need 10 emails from a hiring manager trying to figure out what a term position is. I'll just call them. So yeah, there's time when the phone is necessary. The other thing about, okay, so you have introverted and extroverted, right? I mean, you can kind of see it up there. So I'm introverted, you're gonna get, hello, what can I do for you? Okay, bye. That, that's what you're going to get from me. Other people want to tell you how grandpa and grandma are, and we had a new person come to the base, and we're in processing, and oh yeah, I got another RPA coming. You could have just told me that. So somebody already said, you, you, you just got to be mindful of what the other person responds best with as well. Sometimes you're going to have to put on your extroverted hat and just be extroverted with them. And that will, in fact, help your production get done quicker. Right? Okay. I love caller ID. Because if Miss Hampton calls me, I don't have to answer. I have voicemail. That's awesome, isn't it? 
Probably I'm a right. Five minute message. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. That was, that's even better. <laughs> I'm extroverted. I want to tell you everything on your voicemail. So seriously, if I'm in the middle of, of creating an announcement and I'm about to release it out on USA Staffing, I'm probably not going to pick up the phone. I'm going to continue on with my production, get my production done, let voicemail get it, and then I will get back to that when I'm done with that task. Because I figure for me, because I'm, I didn't use the force well or something, if I get off task and I answer the phone, then I have to go back to my announcement and then someone else comes up, pretty soon it's taken me three hours to do an announcement that should have took 45 minutes. Because I didn't stick with what my production was doing. So I kind of, I, I stick with something and move through. Remember what the first thing about multitasking? Wasting time being unproductive all the time. Yeah, we can do that. So if you call me, don't get upset if I let it go to voicemail. I promise it's not personal, unless it's Crystal. Or <laughs> Then it's really personal. Yeah. So, but, are y'all are kind of following me on that? Sometimes phone calls are necessary. They really are. Questions, thoughts? Thoughts on phone calls versus email, phone calls, extroverted, introverted? <coughs> yes, sir. Like phone calls sometimes too, especially when people keep copying other folks on the emails and suddenly what was between two people is now between Oh, that's people. awesome. Yes. Um, but then also follow, it's, it's always a good idea, at least in my practice, to follow up, especially if there's any decision made or anything that was discussed out to just pay a nice phone call, you know, our office will yep. do this and we expect this from your office, <laughs> uh, just have that documented so we can go back and document it. <laughs> it indeed. And sometimes it's good for clarification. A, you're right. Sometimes there could be a misunderstanding. Yeah. Right? But then we took notes of what you got. Yes, sir. Make sure you know what, uh, what, what each party agreed to clarify. And even like uh, Marshall was saying earlier, he's sometimes very short on his email. That could be taken the wrong way at that time. Mm -hmm. And then you can stir up a lot of stuff yeah. just from sending uh, less than personal emails. Yeah. And phone call solve that. Or could exacerbate. It could. <laughs> what do you want? I'm doing an announcement. I think that's a really important point, actually. Something I've learned about my own email is Then be blunt like you, so I'm just brief and to the point. But as soon as you hit send, how that's received on the other oh end, oh my gosh, yes, exceedingly different. Yes, sir. My God, this guy is really pissed off at me. Well, that wasn't my point at all. So, yeah. just adding a nice little hope you had a great weekend type of thing before you go into your blunt, right? You know, <laughs> bottom line up front might say, mm -hmm. Hey, we're good, mm -hmm. just kind of asking you about this thing. Yeah, but if you call them, assuming you have some interpersonal skills. Um, <laughs> That's the next brown bag. It's going to be clear that you're not pissed off at them. Right. This is something you wanted to talk about. Yes, sir. Yeah, and I think I kind of, I don't know if we, yeah, so you see good afternoon, and then the rest of it is production. I mean, I don't even say have a great day or I hope you're well or none of that. I mean, it's not that I don't care. <laughs> but I'm, I'm just trying to, let's do the job and get, get production done. Okay. Any other questions or thoughts on, those are all great thoughts on phone calls. I love that. And sometimes I think the colonel's right. Sometimes when you call somebody, it can add a little bit of clarification and maybe I need to call and soften up my cert reminder email and call and go, okay, I'm not mad. I'm just trying to remind you. I hope you had a great day. But sometimes, sometimes you just need to do that. Just don't call me two minutes after you send an email and say, hey, did you get my email? Right. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully they know systems don't work. I mean, um, so, um, so clarification. Sometimes when somebody makes a decision, like, hey, I want to recruit for 30% and VRA and VO, I, I'll call them up, I'll call the supervisor up and say, okay, are we sure this is what we want to do? I'm not going to put that in an email. That's something that's just between us. We don't need documentation of that. But I just want to make for sure we're clear. And then once we're clear, then I'll email them back. Okay, got it. Yep, perfect. Let's press. That sort of intermingling between phone calls and email. Okay? Thoughts? Y'all look great. You're hanging in there. I think that's another 
key point I think you were making, but maybe a slight nuance to that, is sometimes you want to send an email because you intentionally want an email trip. You want, right. it's kind of documentation. In fact, it's interesting how we tend to allow email to be pretty official mm -hmm. with regard to documentation. Yep. It either did or did not occur based on the email. Mm -hmm. The phone call is the exact flip side of that. Maybe you don't want the right. trail of that mm -hmm. conversation. I think might have been, or an element of it that you intentionally left out of the email. You want to have a conversation about it, you don't necessarily we don't, want yeah. that to be an email. Yeah. yeah, sometimes you don't need that documented. Yes, sir? Just kind of bleed over between the two when the personality comes in and how you can or cannot read it in an email. Mm -hmm. so, so I had a mentor years ago and uh, said, you know, take the emotion out of it. So if it's anything that you've got you know, just a little bit of emotion to, you know, type it, never fill in the two block until the last. Yes. Walk away from it, get a cup of coffee, and walk around the block, whatever, yeah. come back, or even have a fellow coworker read it and say, hey, you know, is this professional? Am I getting snarky? Uh, right. You know, yeah, we can probably take out that word that's got a little bit of emotion to it and, and step back away from it before you get clicked. And how does it fit into productivity? You know, if it's received well, you're, you accomplish it and you move on. But if it's not received well, you may spend the next three days and the rest of the week right. addressing how it gets escalated. So taking that emotional part out of your conversation, and especially in emails that, that you don't necessarily... You don't have that tone of voice. You don't have a tone of yeah. voice, right? So yeah. words matter, and, and having somebody else take a look at it or walk away from it, especially if it's anything that you're a little bit of emotion to it, step away. Y'all never done that, right? Type up an email and never sent it? Like you just wow. vent it in this email like nobody's business? It wasn't supposed to go to general toast. I know. <laughs> <laughs> For real? Yeah, yeah that's great. Things. That's a fact. Yeah, when I was younger, I was just sing <laughs> Feel good about it. Yeah. Reply <laughs> all. <laughs> but that, that doesn't help our production, right? I mean, because now we, like Colonel said, now we're spending the next three days trying to repair this relationship that if we would have just taken a minute, got our coffee and looked at it again, we could have not had to go through all that. Or it might end up in our boss's email and then we have to explain to our boss why we... So the flip side of that would also be right when we get, when we receive an email, right. to give that person the benefit of the doubt. Maybe they were multitasking, maybe they were... So don't take offense, you know, just assume the best interest. Well, that's it's a tough word, isn't it? <laughs> 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 Are there nice tough words or is there a bad tough word? I know the intent of this one. <laughs> Pretty clear, that's yeah. what I meant. It's kind of interesting now that we're talking all about all this. Intent impacts production. Absolutely. Wow. <laughs> Okay. Y'all are doing great. Are y'all ready to press on to IM? That's good. We're done with email and phone calls? Okay. So, IM. Why we use IM? I love IM. It's real time. So if I have a CPS in Schriever Air Force Base that I need to ask a question, boom, I got an answer, I'm pressing. 30 seconds, I got my answer, I'm done. I'm not waiting for an email, I'm not waiting for them to pick up the phone. Done. Okay. Uh, I can clarify ideas quickly. Like I said, I don't like to talk. I'd rather I am. And let's face it, I can do an announcement while I'm I am. True. I can I can answer an R and T while I'm I am. I, I can we can do both at the same time. That's like doing double production. So now all y'all expected to do eight production numbers a day because we know you can multitask. So, when we don't use I am, and we kind of talked about some of this already, if you need, if you need a document trail, you probably don't want to use, I know sometimes I am saves it in your email, whatever, I turn that off, because that just jumbles everything up to me. If I need, if I really need a document trail, I'm not going to I am, I'm just not because I don't have my subject line to search with, I'm missing all the other parts, I'm just not going to use I am. If we have information that's going to go to IG, EEO, 
um, MSPB, I'm not going to do I am with you. I just can't, really. So that might be another time when we don't use I am. Or if we need information from another system, like specifically if I'm getting some from an email and I want to copy and paste it into USA Staffing, it's probably easier to do that in an email. Or if I need to attach it to DCPDS into my RPA, something like that. That's when I would not use I am. But in fact, I believe I am helps our production. If you use it appropriately. <coughs> Thoughts on I am? Yes. Um, I found that it's also helpful for individuals who telework because even though you're not sitting there uh, with your coworkers hearing oh, these conversations that are happening, um, you can still be involved in real time. That y'all heard that right? That's awesome for teleworkers. That's a that's a good point. Yeah. Did you know that? When you're in there Skyping, you can actually show someone something on your screen, and you can also enable it so they can go on that screen and they can make the changes. Oh, oh that's like real time. Check it so out. So, like right now, I'm going to be working on my vectoring, and mm -hmm. people will call in and say, hey, I'm not seeing this or I'm not seeing that. Right. You can say, hey, let's share screens, mm -hmm. go to this page, and then you can take over. I'm going to try that. Here, this, mm -hmm. here's that. Really? You can oh. also use it uh, when email goes down. You can also use it to send files to. Yes. Oh, that's right. You can send yeah. files through IM. Not that we have that problem, but huh? no. <laughs> we, have, we have had issues with emails and stuff. No, we, not, you can go in. It's. I think it's a little tricky to find some of the things like what Sandy's talking about, but you can send yeah. a file through IM. And that's like if you're if you're for us, we send. If I need to send a. RPA checklist or something back to the supervisor and emails down, I can just send it through IM and they can pick it right up. Yeah. And I didn't know about that, but I'm checking that one out. It's really cool. Yeah, that, that's awesome. What else? Great thoughts. Nothing else on IM? Do you think I am helps with, do y'all use I am to help with your production? Anybody, or is it just me? Well, sometimes um, I am can be um, just as interrupting as people walking uh, by your office. You know? um, yeah, but the good thing about I am is you turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> but there's sometimes when you want it on, but... But Marshall keeps I am you. You get that I am, and, it, and, it's, and it's just like somebody coming and tapping you when you show yes. them. Because they see you green. You can't ignore it. <laughs> Even when they green, see you're you red, know. they still. Yeah. Yeah. So. That, that's a good point. But I just turn it off if I'm really not. It can be disruptive. It sure can. Okay, we're about to get to the funnest part. My favorite part. Kicking people out of our office. <laughs> I wanted to save the question for the end, but I'm gonna talk, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna ask now. How do, you, how do you kick somebody out of your work area professionally? Turn the back door. <laughs> so non-verbals, I like that. Oh, how you doing? <laughs> right? Some people don't get that hint. So, some people don't get that hint. So how do you tell somebody, somebody I've had I'm working on a hot tasker? So, I'm going to have to re-engage with you, but i, I got to get this done. So done just be blunt with them. Yeah. You need to go, I'm working on something hot. Yeah. Talk to me later. What if it's your boss? Turn your back. <laughs> <laughs> So, you can also be blunt with your boss. I'm, I'm working on a hot tasker. Does this? Do you want me to reprioritize and work this issue? Okay, or, good. One. I mean, you can just be. What's honest. my priority, boss? What's my priority. Is yeah. my priority to talk to you, or is my priority? Well, you told me to work on this. Now you want me to work on this, right? What do you want me to do first? Yeah. So, what about coworkers? That's a little easier, isn't it? <laughs> Not really. Just let them talk, and you. Can <laughs> <just> <laughs> <talk>. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> That's so <pretty. laughs> That's the open 
woman right now. <laughs> that might have been the email that you should have typed out. In the <laughs> so we really do we not really have problems with visitors, bosses, and I mean, do y'all get bothered all the time with people coming up and saying, "Hey, how's it going? How was the ball game last weekend?" I notice it doesn't say employees up there. I'm kind of confused about that. <laughs> <laughs> no oh, customers. <laughs> we left that off on purpose. Huh. And, and depending on the way they approach you, it can be very disturbing. So, like, you have a, hey, just right out in the open and kind of scream at you. You already have the people that come up and kind of on your desk. and Right. <laughs> Then you really want them going after that point, like, okay, now that was disrespectful, it's time to leave. <laughs> <laughs> now, really, yes, sir. Yeah. And it depends on the situation, you know, we're humans. Right. And so, uh, certain people in your office or co workers that you're connected with and they're going through a hard time in their life, you know, that might not be the time to say, hey, turn your back on and stuff and everything. Just talk about caring about everybody, but also, you know, you got a situation, be aware of the situation. Yeah. You know, maybe somebody just died in your family, this that. that might not be the time. You might have to let your boss know, hey, I was a little late on this because, you know, I was comforting and leaving because, you know, you lost so and so. Right. Just be aware of the situation, you know. I think that's a good point. Yeah, yeah it's, not, it's not all the time, be well, take off, get out of here. Um, a little situational awareness can go a long ways. Yes, sir? Well, I may work in a little different environment. We do PII, everything we touch is So what we've learned is strangers outside of the COVID Science, science, they area, so we're to stop production anytime uh, strangers Within the <coughs> area, we have a lot, we have a lot of stuff going on, we don't need production. We've instituted lights. If we don't want to be interrupted, we turn on light. It's best to turn on. We don't care everybody in the work area. Hey, don't interrupt me right now. We're still out there. Good one. I do too. Any of y'all just put earbuds in and turn your music on and Yeah, it doesn't work. It doesn't work, does it? I'm like, do you not see I have earbuds in and I'm working? I mean can can No, they want to come sit on my desk and talk with me. Introverted. Yes, sir. You can put noise cancellation uh, headphones on. You don't even have music on. You just want want the thing that you're not listening to. So you can hear it. And that's and it does do a lot for getting rid of the noise. But when people come and sit at your desk, it's so hard to ignore them. Well, this for me. So what about outside visitors? Our customers. Do do y'all have customers that come in and and visit you to to work on production and that kind of stuff? I mean, so, so really, the visitor could be helping production, but there comes a point when we need to escort them out of the building. So I had an issue when I first got here, working um, in the ops group and trying to get our PAs out, and a staffer came down with needing some answers to a question. And I'm so focused on trying to get these out, but they are on the suspense as well. So you're trying to work right. that they have to get an answer back to the field, and we're trying to get these things out. So a uh, little tension in regards to my priority and bigger than your priority, and you know who's the bigger. Uh -huh. uh, so uh, just kind of have to be mindful and, and uh, compromise. Compromise. That's a good one. Sometimes we have to do that. Okay, I need to talk to you for a minute because it'll help get later, maybe later production, right? I'm not, it's not what I'm working on right now, but later production will help if I talk to you right now. What else? Man, this is awesome. Look, we done took up 48 minutes already. <clears throat> okay, so basically we've decided we kick our bosses out and we tell our coworkers to go away. Did I sum that up correctly? No, not really, yeah. Maintain your situational awareness and be mindful of what's around you. I think that's really good. Yep. Okay. Guess what? We're through. I don't see too many scars or bruises, so we must be okay. 
I just want to say thanks. Thanks for being here, letting me talk for a couple minutes. And, and thanks for all you do here at AFPC. Uh, it is well appreciated. So thank you very much.